what is going on everybody? It's Steven here and welcome back to another China Phone Review. Today we're going to have a look at the Amstar S700 from Pandaville.com. Now I actually bought two phones because I was very excited and I gave one to a good friend. And I bought one directly from Amstar, so from the factory, because it was cheaper. But actually as end user they don't sell you anything, so they just sell in really big lots. So I bought the second one from Pandaville.com and link is down below in the description if you want to check it out. Now it retails for something like 150 bucks, which is a very cheap price, and for that you get some pretty nice build quality. And well, Amstar is also the OEM factory for MLace, so actually, yeah, they are the same brand. But MLace is more for the end users, it's um, already established, there are a lot of MLace phones. And Amstar is now bringing out their own phones on the market. So they're now coming up here with the S700, and by the way, this phone has really good build quality and comes with nice specs for a low price. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the specs of the phone. Now for 150 bucks, you get a 5.5 inch screen and there's a black bar around the display as you can see. But don't worry, so you have 5.5 inches also without that black bar. Then um, it comes with an MTK6752 octa-core chipset. It's clocked at 1.7 GHz, includes the Mali T760 GPU. Um, by the way, the resolution of the of the screen is 1280 x 720 pixels, if I haven't said it before, so it's HD, but it looks very good. It just looks like the full HD screen on the Elephone P7000. Then straight out of the box, it is running Android 5.0, comes with 2GB of RAM plus 16GB of ROM, so that's pretty standard right now. Then, as always, it's a dual SIM device, dual standby, and you can also put in a micro SD card. So two SIMs, one micro SD card to extend your internal memory. Dual cameras, front-facing camera 5 megapixels, real nice wide angle, it's looking good. Rear camera 13 megapixel, I don't know which sensor. Then it supports FDD, LT, 4G, 3G, and you can find all the frequencies down below in the description, so make sure you check this out. This is really important, otherwise maybe the phone is not working in your country because it's not the world LT phone. But um, in my country, Austria, Central Europe, this phone is um, usable and it's not a problem at all. Alright guys, so it comes in this box here, so the Amster box, and on the back side we have all the specs I've just told you. And if you want to see an unboxing, um, I've done an unboxing a couple of days ago with the Elephone S2 and you can find it down below in the description, so make sure you click the link. But now guys, let's get directly started, let's have a quick look at the phone, how it looks like, and if you want to see all the accessories, then just check out my unboxing. So guys, here's the Amstar S700, and well, so far the build quality feels and looks really good. Just check it out, I absolutely love it. There are no gaps, it doesn't bend, and it looks really, really good. But um, just like on the Elephone P7000, you have a black bar around the display. You don't actually see it when you have a black wallpaper, so it looks like on the Photoshop pictures, it looks a little bit better less than, but if you have a bright wallpaper or a colorful wallpaper, paper then you can see that black border we can just check it out it's about four millimeters plus one millimeter of that white frame here and um, actually I think a white border would look much better but yeah it's just a design of the phone and nothing you can do about it so far it's looking really nice except of the black border and let's have a look at the display and the display it's 720p but it really looks like full HD sorry for the rainbow effect that's my camera with the 4k focus but honestly the display is very sharp as you can see and it looks like the full HD display on the Elephone P7000 so there's not a huge difference if the panel is really good okay um, now that was the display then let's stay here on the front side and let's have a look at the touch buttons here so here we have a capacitive home button capacitive menu button and capacitive back button. They don't have any backlight and, well, you can see um, the border here, the white border at the bottom, it's very thin actually because of that black border around the display. Then here at the top we have the speaker in the middle. Here on the right side we have light and proximity sensor and here we have the front-facing camera, but there is no notification LED or something like that. So let's go to the back side and let's check this out. Now here in the middle we have um, the fingerprint scanner, so it's just like Touch ID on the iPhone, you don't have to swipe over it, so just put your finger on it. Here also the rear camera should have 30 megapixels and I have to say so far pictures are looking very good. LED flash, now the LED flash on this model Really, I don't lie, it's almost as bright like on my Galaxy S6 Edge. So I will show you night pictures then with the LED flash and it's looking very good. Okay, so let's have a look at the frame. 
Um, it's a metal frame just like on the P7000 but I think it's a little bit thicker. Now here in the middle we have the 3.5mm headphone jack as you can see. It's not exactly in the middle of the frame but well I can live with that. Here we have the micro USB port to charge it or connect it to the computer. It's also here at the top side. Um, there are no sharp edges but here the face it feels a little bit rough in my opinion but let's go here on this side of the frame, sorry for the focus. Now here you have the slot to remove the back cover, so the back cover is removable. The metal frame here actually looks quite nice. Now here at the bottom we have the bottom microphone, so it's that hole here to do calls, one and only microphone of the smartphone. And here on the left side of the frame we have the power button here um, in the middle of the phone. And above the power button we have the volume rocker, so volume down, volume up. And the buttons in there, they are not sliding around, so they feel actually very good to press. So guys, that's the phone from the outside, and it feels somehow like the Galaxy Note 4, so the build quality also very good. The phone is quite stable, it doesn't bend, and I'm applying now a lot of force, probably without back cover and everything, it will bend like the P7000. But so far the build quality, no gaps, no LCD clouding, no pressure points, so, so far it's looking very nice. Then I would say now let's go and let's remove the back cover and let's see what that baby here has got under the hood. So guys, now let's quickly go and let's remove the back cover to see what this baby has got under the hood. So there we go. You can remove the back cover right over here at the top. Just go in there with your fingernail and whoops, just lift it off. Bends a little bit but it doesn't break. Just a plastic back cover without any functions, so no antennas, no wireless charging, no NFC. Then um, let's just check out the phone here from the inside. First of all I want to show you the battery, which you can remove too, so just right over here. So let's quickly go and let's have a closer look at that M-Star battery. Now this battery should actually have 3000 milliamp hours, as you can tell by the sticker here. But well, 3000 milliamp hours, never ever. The battery here is very thin and it's very lightweight, so it does not come with 3000 milliamp hours. Maximum 2.5 <laughs> if it's a good battery. So well, um, this cannot be true guys, and I'm really sure that the capacity is not true. I've received my load tester, so probably we can do a battery test soon. But you know it's kind of difficult to um, design a good connector because all of those batteries have the 3 pin connector on different sides, different size, and yeah. Um, you can see here it says 3000 on there, 3.8 volts, but I'm pretty sure that this is not true and it comes here with the Amstar logo. So what I will do, I will um, maybe dismantle the battery like on the Yumi Hammer or maybe I will just have a look at the battery with my load tester. But so far the capacity is not true, that's bad Amstar. So guys, here's the rest of the phone and here at the top we have the rear camera, 30 megapixels, looks kind of good. In each corner we have one of the antennas like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, here Touch ID fingerprint scanner and here we have the LED flash on the back side. Well, um, this slot here, it's actually a dual SIM slot with one micro SD card slot. So that SIM card slot too, I think, that holds my micro um, SIM card. And here you have a regular size SIM card slot and here a micro SD card slot for SD cards up to 64 gigs to extend your internal memory. Then here the sticker, Amster logo, two IMEI numbers because it's a dual SIM, dual standby phone. Here we have the 3-pin battery connector and here at the bottom we have the 3D sound speaker all along with the LT antenna. Okay guys, so this is how the phone looks from the inside. Actually quite nice. The only bad thing so far is that the battery capacity is definitely not true. But the rest of the phone is looking very good so far. So let's just put it back together and then let's see how this little baby here performs in Android 5. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're now here on the smartphone and as we can already see if you have a look at the screen, then it's really quite sharp and the small icons and the small fonts here it really makes you feel that it's in full HD screen so it looks really good. Let's go to the settings and let's check everything out here so here we have about the phone and here we can confirm that this is here Android version 5.0. Here we have the Android Easter egg as you can see so this is definitely Android Lollipop and not some spoofed version. Then here we have build number, kernel version, baseband version. So you can check everything here out. This is currently the latest version. I've made a wireless update today. So there was an auto in the morning. And yeah, actually I unpacked it um, today or yesterday. So um, I'm not really sure if the auto is brand new, but 
as we can tell by the date, it's from the 12th of June. So quite new. That's nice, Hamster, that you provide updates. Okay, but for now, somehow, while well, this update was timing out. But let's have a quick look at the settings here. First of all, Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi, I noticed that this here is a little bit weaker than on some other brand phones I have here. Like in the second floor in my um, sleeping room, the router's in the basement, by the way, I usually have a low signal on my Galaxy S6, but here on the Amstar I could barely get a signal, so it's just a little bit lower than on some other brand phones here. But currently I'm in the next room to the router and we get a good signal and 135 Mbits. So Wi-Fi is okay, but maybe a little bit lower than on some other devices I have here. Now Bluetooth, okay, that's working, I've checked this out. And I did a quick tethering test and it was not getting hot like some other devices here, so that's pretty good. Let's have a look at display. And there is no mirror vision included, so if you need that to adjust your display, then, well, I have to disappoint you, it is not included, but here we have the sensor recalibration. But so far, all the sensors are working. S view cover settings also here, but there was no cover included. So let's come back here. Then here's storage. So what do we have here? Now we have a 2 gigabyte partition and we have here another 10 gigabyte partition. This is so useless, so they should just um, repartition it to one partition to use everything for apps. This really sucks, guys, and I don't want to play around with um, the EBRs once again, so this is quite annoying. Please do it just like Elephone. Bring us one big partition. There is no need to split the memory. It makes absolutely no sense. No other company is doing that. Actually, a lot of other companies, but no serious company. Okay, the battery stats. <laughs> no, well, just check this out. So um, I was actually using it with some with some very low battery percentage. Then um, I had music on or something like that. I just forgot to um, turn it off, and it was dropping. Same here, so it was dropping quite fast. But um, after some time, I really have to say it's you get barely through a day. Battery is quite small. And I did a lot of testing, so um, benchmarks and everything all the time with display on all the time, and it dropped really hard. So what I can tell you is that you can get through the day, so we have a 50%, approximately 8 hours left, let's say 50% of that, so 4 hours left times 2 is about 8 hours usage. Anyway, um, I would just say barely a day, not more. So... Also, all other phones actually here. I have to charge it every day. Now, if you're a very slight user and you always turn everything off when you um, just lock it, and with that I mean you you turn off free if you don't need it, then it's maybe more than a day. But on that phone, yeah, just a day usage. Okay, that was the battery. Then let's have a look at apps here. Let's go to running apps in the background. Let's see the memory consumption. And we have here 870 megabytes of RAM used by the system. Then some other apps which are running in the background here, they use 270. So I end up with about 800 megabytes of free RAM. Oh, sorry, I got an email from Christopher. Not sure who that is. But um, 800 megabytes of free RAM, I would say it's enough. Actually, I don't use so many um, applications they, that they eat all the RAM. And um, yeah, I prefer 3 gigabyte phones like, for instance, my S6 Edge or the Elephone P7000, but with 2 gigabytes of RAM, you're actually fine too. All right, so let's go back here. Then here we have the finger scanner. And I have to say, it works really, really good. So, okay, I've not registered the fingerprint because that is the second Amster, but let's do it together, guys. Now, the fingerprint scanner is here on the back side, so I will just put my finger on the scanner. One, two, three. Four, five. So when you register, you should actually do it in some some different angle too, because then it's easier to get it recognized again. Okay. Well, now it's um, it's learned. So let me enter a password one two three four. That's always a very safe password. Just joking. Okay, screen lock, fingerprint lock. Now it's activated. But the cool thing is that the date has provided like elephone and app lock. And the app lock basically lets you lock several apps here with your fingerprint. If you don't want that somebody's reading your WhatsApp messages, just lock it with your fingerprint. But other people can still use your phone, so pretty cool thing actually. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's try the fingerprint scanner. We can lock the system. Let's go back. And now I would have to um, slide to unlock or input fingerprint. So let me do that. 
Okay, I have to go out here of the password form, so otherwise it's not working. Wasn't detected, was detected. So I'm not doing it straight right now, I'm just doing it like this, and it's still working. So the fingerprint scanner is just the same like on the Elephone P7000. It's working really good and there is nothing to worry about that. Fingerprint scanner is also very safe. You just um, have to put your finger on it. You don't have to swipe over it. So the fingerprint scanner is working very good. It also supports off-screen gestures like double tap to wake up. That's something I use very often, but the other things like launch camera, I actually don't use it. So I have to say that. Okay. Location and input, so um, GPS. Um, let's quickly go to language and input. So I mostly check um, if it's a complete ROM, if it includes Austria, and that's Österreich for my German friends. And well, it's a very small country actually, but you see there are a lot of languages included, maybe not all, but um, also the translation is sometimes bad because um, if you switch to German, sometimes the phone gets into a tablet like it says everywhere, tablet. It's a little bit weird, but well, that's the native translation of Android. You know, it's not the best. Okay, um, well, that's basically everything here in the settings. So let's go back here. Okay, guys, so that were the settings. Then let's have a quick look here at the Android status bar. So here should have your notifications. Currently, there are none. Then here you can see the brightness slider working perfectly nice from 0 to 100%. So it's not bugged like on the other phone. We have here Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, cast screen, then the flashlight, which I will show you later, and data connection. So let's close this. And the octa-core and 2 gigabytes of RAM are definitely enough, so the phone is really smooth and snappy. And you see that's a stock launcher, so it performs really, really good. Okay, so let's have a look here at the dialer APK. Let's try to call here some random numbers, so there we go. The phone is working perfectly nice in my country, but please, before you buy a China phone, make sure all the frequencies are supported. Oh well, what's okay, the sensor's working, was just a little bit slow. Yeah, it's just a, bit, a little bit slow, but it's okay. Then let me switch to the speaker. And well, the speaker is quite loud. So let's wait a bit. Yeah, the speaker is really quite loud, so there's nothing to worry about. Um, regarding the clarity, it could probably be better, but um, from the loudness, it's really okay. And we'll later also do a quick speaker test. So calls and everything is working. Also, 3G is working on that phone. Really nice. Um, I have no problem with the MTK6752, but with the new chipset somehow there's a problem here with the bands in my area. Okay, um, here the messaging application. Let's try to um, compose a message. And, well, typing feels really good. Five-point capacitive touchscreen and the vibration feedback is coming from right over here. It feels like that. But feels kind of good, not cheap like on some other phones. Okay, then let's have a look at the browser. There we go. I was just looking up something on AliExpress. Yeah, I think that store, I just wanted to check it out. It's the guy from Brotech. Yeah, whatever. Um, working good so far, then let's have a look here at the applications. And actually the first important one after browser calculator is the camera application. So I would suggest that we now go outside and let's do a quick camera test here on the Amster S700. Okay guys, we're now here outside in my garden to do a quick camera test on the Amster S700 and so far it's looking very good. Just check this out. The focus here is working and it's not only sharp here in the middle, also the outer borders here, they look very sharp in preview. As always, you can find sample pictures down below in the description, so they are attached to the written review on chinadevices.com. So make sure you click it and then you can download the sample pictures. Alright, then let's test the camera. So it's here, the lens should be cleaned. Then um, let's focus here on a bright area. Lighting adjustment is working, that's really good. Also it's quite fast as you can see. Then let's try to capture some pics. Also the shutter here, really no delay, it's quite fast. Then let's check out some pictures here in the gallery. So. I captured some pics and you see um, the plants all here. They are very sharp. I'm really curious on how this will look on the computer, but we'll um, check it out together a little bit later. As always, you can just download all the samples from China devices. So let's switch to the front-facing camera. Something I like, this is really wide-angle. It's no problem to get yourself on the picture and the quality in preview, it's looking very good. Okay, so let's capture here a selfie. Hello, guys. And I will also upload that to China devices. And let's have a look here at the settings. Here you can see the maximum picture size is 5 megapixels, not only in full in full um, 4 to 3, so also in full screen. Then here in 4 to 3, also 5 megapixels. So let's switch here to the rear camera. 
and here in the settings we have the usual stuff 13 megapixels in preview and in 4 to 3 I guess we have 13 too well so that is looking good so far um, maximum ISO 1600 um, in video mode we have noise reduction electronic image stabilization and we now set the video quality to fine for the test video okay yeah so far this is looking very good so normal camera application actually nothing special here at the bottom you have some effects some hipster effects some yeah aqua stuff whatever not using that at all I'm not an Instagram fanboy or something like that here on the left side we have um, different modes, HDR is also supported because people always keep asking me and also smile and gesture shot. So, so far I'm happy with the front facing camera and with the rear camera and now um, let's do some sample videos from both and then let's check out some pictures on the computer. So guys, here's a quick back camera test with the Amstar S700 and currently image stabilization is on just for testing, the focus is working, let's just try here some close-ups and close-ups are looking really good so far so nothing to worry about then let's check out some objects here in the background so let me quickly focus and let's go a little bit around EIS is currently on so the image stabilization and let's check out some more close-ups and um, the color of that um, rose should be pink so some very beautiful and slight pink and wow so far this is looking really good here on the screen of the smartphone but um, as always just check for yourself how the quality looks for you is it enough for your needs or not it's really hard to say the video quality is bad or not it always depends um, do you film a lot with your smartphone but let's have a look here at the AVB and the lighting adjustment you see that is looking good so far also objects here in the background I can focus on the house it's not totally blurry or something like that so so far it is looking actually really good at least here on the screen of the smartphone once again just check for yourself does the quality look good for you how's the microphone quality and I will also watch it on the computer and tell you then my final um, opinion on the video quality but so far um, it's looking actually very good Here's a quick front-facing camera test on the Amstar S700 and I really like it. The front-facing camera is wide-angle as you can see, so you can easily get yourself here on the picture. I don't have to hold the um, smartphone far away from my body. Then, wow, in preview the resolution looks very good and you see it's not laggy. And the focus is working, so there we go. There is no touch focus, but it focuses automatically. Um, well, let's have a look at some colors here. That should be white. It's looking very natural on the screen of the smartphone. Oh, holy shit. But, well, it looks really good. AVB is working, lighting adjustment. You see that. So, front-facing camera in preview on the smartphone looks really good. But just check for yourself. Does it look okay for you? Is it enough? Or do you need something better? But for me, it's actually looking very good. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so that was the camera test, not too bad guys, and here we have alarm clock, so the usual stuff, final manager, FM radio, but you have to have a headset because you have to use it as antenna, it comes with Google Mail, it comes with Google Maps, it comes with the Google Play Store, so all Google apps pre-installed, you really don't have to worry about that. Let's have a quick look at the bands, and we can just have a look at SIM2 first. SIM2 supports GSM, 3G, so quad band, and here um, the four LT bands like 1, 3, 7, and 20. Now let's go back here, and the funny thing is that SIM1 actually only supports 2G. So you can input a micro, micro SIM card, and this will, will support 4G, LT, 3G, and everything. And the first SIM card slot actually is the 2G slot with the big regular size SIM card. So that's something you have to deal with. You cannot use 4G and 3G in both slots. Alright, so that were the bands. So let's go here to the second page. Here we have the Google Play Store. Latest version, so you can download everything here from the Play Store. You don't get unsupported phone or anything. And, well, I'm locked in here with my private account. So if I text to the and the phone is really safe, no spy wonder. Otherwise, I wouldn't log in with my account. Okay, um, that's basically it. That's the Play Store. And I think that was also the last important application here. The rest um, was installed by myself, except of SIM toolkits and Google Voice Search, which is working because the microphone is working. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's basically the smartphone. We just had a quick look here at Android. You can install everything because it's an Android phone compatible with almost all applications from the Play Store. And now I would say let's do a quick GPS test. Let's do a speaker test, flashlight test, 
than some benchmarks and after all this you will hear my final conclusion about the Amstar S700. Now guys here's a quick speaker test and also video test here on YouTube so 720p playback is working. I have here some random song from NCS. I also tried some MP3s. Volume is okay, actually could be a little bit louder but depends on the media you feed the phone with. Here um, in this YouTube movie it's not too loud but um, the clarity is super nice and let me um, give you a quick test. So there we go. Just listen guys. I think the clarity is really nice, even though I also did a quick MP3 test, so it could be a bit louder. But I like it, um, if you listen to house or something like that, so there's also a little bit of bass in there. Not too bad the speaker, not the crackiest one, but it's, it's sounding actually okay. For the price it's definitely okay. And now let's just go and let's do a quick LED flash test. It's now completely dark in here, so let's do a quick LED flash test and I have to say the LED flash of that device is super nice. It's very white, it's a single LED flash but it's very strong, it really absolutely hurts in my eyes. Usually um, cheap LED flashes from some other phones like the Elephone S2, they just make such a small um, circle but here it lights up Actually, now the camera can't really track that, but it really lights up the whole desk. It's looking very good. And I would say it's almost as good like on my S6 Edge, which has a very good LED flash. But let's try to capture some photos. I will also upload some night samples and onto China devices. So there we go. I think the LED flash is on. Let's capture a quick photo. So there we go. Let's check this out. Oh, well, I did some here in my sleeping room and it was really good actually. Maybe I can show you some other samples there. Yeah, here it is. So here's the first one and you see it's very bright everywhere, just a little bit dark here in the right upper corner, but um, much better than on some other phones. Just check out my reviews. I usually do such um, tests here in the darkness and Really, I think that was the phone which performed the best here. So the LED flash is super awesome on the Amstar S700. Okay guys, now here's also a quick test of the compass. And north is here in that direction, so actually exactly to the left. So let's try this here once again. Points to the left, points to the left here. And that is looking really good so far. So the compass is working and I tried it outside. It was working outside better because we're currently here in the basement with a lot of electronic components here. So even though we're here in the basement, the compass is showing um, approximately to north. So that is really good and thumbs up for the compass. This is working nice. Okay guys, so here's a quick GPS test in the GPS test application. And well, I'm now driving around for something like 15 minutes to test it and the signal is actually very good. We have 19 satellites in view, we have 18 in use, so almost all in use right now. For instance, as a little comparison, my Samsung Galaxy S6 supports more GPS protocols, so I got something like 26 satellites here. And here only 19, but this is still more than enough on some phones, I don't even get 10. But here new chipset supports a little bit more, you can see 19 in view, 18 in use, looking very good. Then just check out the signal bus. I mean, we have a beautiful day today. It's just a little bit cloudy, but very sunny. Then, wow, the signal bus right now, very beautiful. So on the most phones, I get like um, a couple of green bars, but here we have quite many green bars. Green is actually good signal, means signal level over 30. And really, so far, the GPS signal is looking very good. Now here um, in Android 5, always when I'm driving around, accuracy goes up with the speed, but well, um, so don't care about the accuracy right now. Now, just check out here the signal bars and so far the GPS signal is looking really good here on the Amstar 700. So what we're um, going to do now, we're just going to do, <laughs> sorry guys it's very shaky, we're just going to do a little GPS test in Sidekick on that smartphone and let's see how GPS um, performs in reality. So guys here's a quick GPS test in Sidekick offline navigation and I have to say GPS works really good on the phone. We have beautiful weather today, but also GPS is very accurate. Now um, we'll just do a quick reroute test, so how long it takes to reroute, but I have to say it's completely accurate. Just have a look here at the road, I will tell you now when we hit the road. So right now. And also here on the phone, well it's very very accurate. And then let's try to pick a different road and let's see how long it takes to reroute. 
Let's drive to the left, and there we go. Hope the camera doesn't drop. <laughs> One second, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, well, it's stuck a little bit. So, seven, eight seconds until it finds um, the new direction. And I would say this is okay. I had phones um, like the M Lace M4, something like that. Um, it took something like 30 seconds, and you could completely, yeah, destroy the phone with that. So you could confuse it, and it lost the signal then. But here on the Amster S700, it works kind of good. GPS is accurate. Um, it doesn't show me off the road, as you can see. It follows the road exactly. And so far, I'm absolutely happy with the GPS performance of the smartphone with the new MTK chips. So ladies and gentlemen, we're now here at the end of this review and here comes my conclusion about the Amstar S700. Now Amstar, you did a pretty good job on that smartphone, but something I absolutely don't like is if um, a company is cheating on the customers. Like 3000 mAh in that battery, no way guys. So please get your shit together, um, we're here in Europe, I'm not sure um, how the laws are in China. But really, honestly, I don't want, I wouldn't want to sell something like this in my shop because then people are coming and say, yeah, well, the battery lifetime is crap or something like that and they will give it back or something like this. I just don't want to do that. So just label it correctly. I mean, the phone is very good. If they just read 2200 or 2500 on the box, it would, yeah, also be sold because the phone is really not bad. So you did a pretty good job on the whole phone. 
but in my opinion it could be just 2mm thicker and with a bigger battery, but that's it, the rest of the phone is very good. The 720p screen just looks like full HD on other smartphones, the quality really good, there are no gaps, it doesn't bend like the Banana Phone 7000, and also the rest of the hardware, it's really great, I mean 2GB of RAM are more than enough for some people, and it lowers the price, so you are here at 150 bucks for that little beauty here, which would be enough for the most people, and they don't need a Note 4, they would be happy with that phone here too. But um, actually some people will be um, disappointed because the battery lifetime is just barely a day. Not really sure what the real capacity is, but I plan to do um, a maybe a Geekbench, all of them, or maybe just a load test with the batteries. Not really sure, but I want to do something like all the new phones I have and test the batteries of all them in one video. That would be really great actually. But please Amster, get your shit together. Bring a bigger battery or stop trolling us. The rest of the phone is very good, so thumbs up for Amster. And um, if you really um, want to get this phone, then also have a look at the M Lays. I think it's the M7, which I'm going to review next. Because actually, I think the battery on the M Lays was thicker and the capacity, yeah, should be more than the capacity on this phone. And the specs are also very similar. So make sure you also check out the MLA's M7, it will come probably tomorrow if I have time, or on Friday, so stay tuned. But this phone is really not bad, good job Amster, which is also producing for MLA's. So actually, just do it like on the MLA's, just put in a bigger battery into that beast, then it would be super awesome. The black bar around the display, well, it's the design of the phone. I mean, on the Photoshop pictures it probably looks good, here it just doesn't look that good. With white I think it would look better, but that's basically it. Phone is nice and slim, camera quality is nice, GPS is nice, performance is nice. What do you want for 150 bucks? I say thumbs up, except of the battery. So that was my review, check out pandable.com down below in the description. So thanks for watching guys, and I really hope I see you again in my next video. So have a nice day, and bye bye!